second set of notes over stoichiometry deals with more complex multi-step stoichiometry problems. Now every stoichiometry problem is going to involve moving from one substance to another. That's what makes it stoichiometry that involves the mole ratio that we looked at in the previous set of notes. So if we're going to do a problem like this, how many molecules of hydrogen does it take to make 647 grams of water? Well, in their previous situation, they were given us moles and asked us to find moles. That was really easy to do. We've got things other than moles here. So, yes, I want to go from one subs to another, water to hydrogen, but there's some other units and other things to deal with that I didn't have to worry about before. So here's our reaction for the, the production of water from hydrogen oxygen. 2H2 plus 1O2 makes 2H2Os. And what we're trying to do in this problem is go from 647 grams of water to how many molecules of hydrogen would that take to make? Well, the only way to move from one substance to another is to use the mole ratio. That's what we looked at before. But I don't have moles of either of these two things. So that's going to involve more work than what I looked at before. Now, you've got three tools of stoichiometry that we've typically looked at at this point in chemistry. And yeah, that's so far because we do look at other things. But we looked at really three fundamental tools of stoichiometry. One is mole ratio, which I looked at in the last set of notes. It deals with the balanced equation coefficients and it allows us to go from moles of one substance to moles of another. But in your previous chemistry, you've looked at other relationships involving moles. One would be molar mass, where you have the mass on the periodic table equaling in grams, equaling one mole. And remember, this allows us to convert back and forth between mass of a substance and its moles, and vice versa. Notice, in molar mass, we're dealing with the same substance. We're just going between mass of A to moles of A, or moles of A to mass of A. Now, the third tool of stoichiometry that we've used involves Avogadro's number. There's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles in one mole of a substance. So we can also convert back and forth between particles of A, because remember, particles can be atoms, molecules, or formulas, depending upon the type of substance. So remember, Avogadro's number can deal with atoms, or it can deal with molecules, or it can deal with formula units, depending on whether you have an atomic substance, a molecular substance, or an anionic substance. But in each case, what we're really doing is going from particles of that substance to moles of that substance, and vice versa. So these are really the three tools that we typically use in stoichiometry. Now, every stoichiometry problem is going to use one. That's what makes it stoichiometry. But you also may be using two and three in problems. So really, to answer our original question, we're going to end up using all three tools here because it mentioned molecules, and it mentioned grams, and we had to go from one substance to another. And that's going to mean that we're going to have a three-step problem. So how many molecules of hydrogen does it take to make 647 grams of water? Well, to tackle that problem, this not only problem not only involves changing from one substance to another, which is mole ratio, but it also involves mass in moles, because to get from moles of water to moles of hydrogen, because that's what I'm doing when I go from one substance to another, I need the mole ratio. But I'm in grams, so i got to get to moles. And then I'm going to get moles, so i got to get to molecules. And that's going to involve Avogadro's number. So really, the three things we're doing in this problem, changing grams to moles, and then moles of water to moles of hydrogen, and then moles of hydrogen to molecules of hydrogen, are going to involve all of my tools of stoichiometry here. So really what this means is, worst case, problems are going to take three steps. They're always going to involve going from moles of one thing to another every single time. That's what makes it stoichiometry. But sometimes we got to get to moles, like we did here at the beginning. And sometimes we get out of moles, like we did here at the end. So worst case, stoichiometry problems are three-step problems. So at worst, all stoichiometry problems are going to be three steps. So to make this simpler, that's how I'm going to teach you to do it. To keep it simple, always set it up as a three-step problem. So you got your workspace, you're ready. You just may not need all the spots in here. So to make it simple and the same every single time, we're just going to treat it like it's a three-step every single time. Now. Once you've got your workspace, you're going to put in your given in your target. It said 647 grams of water, and I wanted to know how many molecules of hydrogen. Now, the key to stoichiometry is that every single problem must have the mole ratio step. Now, since we sometimes have to do something at the beginning and sometimes have to do something at the end, we're going to always do the thing in the middle. So that's where we're going to start. And if we start there, it actually helps us do the first and the third if we have to do them. It also shows us if we even need to do them. So the way I recommend is start in this middle step here. You don't want water, so we're going to put water on the bottom. i got to get rid of it. And I'm in units of 
um, moles when I go to a new substance. So to get rid of water, I got to be in moles of water to change moles of water into moles of something else. So I'm going to put water at the bottom here. And what I want to get to is hydrogen. So I'm going to put hydrogen at the top there. And remember, when I go from one thing to another, I have to be in units of moles. So realistically, what I did was I put water at the bottom and then I put hydrogen at the top because I wanted to get rid of water and I wanted to get to hydrogen. So whatever is here is going to go down here and whatever is here is going to go up there every single time. And the only way to go from one substance to another is moles. So now I'm going to put in the word moles on top and bottom. I start every single stoichiometry problem this exact same way. My getting substance, beginning substance I put at the bottom, my ending substance I put at top, and then I put moles in each place. Now, where do I get a mole ratio from? Well, it comes from the balanced equation. That's right at the top. Remember, they come from the coefficients of the balanced equations. And that's why I need a balanced equation for every stoichiometry problem, because mole ratio is in every stoichiometry problem, and that's where I get my numbers from. It says two moles of hydrogen and two moles of water. So I got to put two by the hydrogen and two by the water. So remember your numbers, you're just copying right out of the balanced equation. Now I'm done with my middle step. Now remember, that's the step that's always there. It's just that sometimes I have to do the first and third steps as well. Well, doing that middle step first is really going to immensely help me with the first and the third. So next, decide if you need the first or the last step. So do I need to do those? Well, what do I mean by that? Well, notice I'm in grams of water right here. This thing deals with moles of hydrogen. So no, I'm not in my proper unit to get these two things to just straight transfer with each other. So yes, I have to change out of grams of water and get to moles of water. I've got to do that. And that's why this middle step helps me with the other steps. Now, at the end here, I want to be in molecules of hydrogen. Well, notice I'm in moles of hydrogen here. So yes, I need to get from moles of hydrogen to molecules of water. Yes, I need to do the third step. So in order to decide whether you need to do the first or third, just look at what you start with and what you end up with. Because the mole ratio is right there in front of you, and you know you need to be in moles and moles in that. So if I'm not in moles at the beginning, i got to do the first step. And if they don't ask me to find moles at the end, I have to do the third step. So that's all you do to decide if you're doing the first or the third step. So since we need to be in moles of water for that middle step to go from moles of water to moles of hydrogen, that tells me exactly what i got to do in step one. I have to change grams of hydrogen into moles of hydrogen. So those are the two things that are going to go there. And remember, I can make a conversion factor out of any two equivalent things. Well, molar mass tells me how many grams equal how many moles. So in one mole of water, I've got 18.0 grams of water off the periodic table. So my first step is actually going to be a molar mass step. So yes, I had to do the first step. Then I've got my second step, which is always going to be there. And then finally, in that last step, since we need molecules, and in the middle step, we're getting to moles of hydrogen, then yes, we got to do the last step. And yes, it's involving molecules and moles. That's Avogadro's number. So I don't want moles of hydrogen, because remember, at this point in the problem, I am in moles of hydrogen. If I want to get rid of them, then I have to have them top and bottom so they would cancel. So moles of hydrogen have to go on the bottom of this third step. And my target tells me what i got to change into. Well, that's got to be molecules of hydrogen. Well, what are my numbers? What conversion factor deals with molecules or moles? It's Avogadro's number. And remember, it is the number of particles in one mole. So one has to go by the mole. And it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of hydrogen. Because remember, hydrogen H2 is a molecule substance, molecular substance. So Avogadro's number is going to deal with molecules here. At this point, I've converted and canceled every unit. I got rid of grams of water here and here. I got rid of moles of water there and there. I got rid of moles of hydrogen there and there, and I'm left with molecules of hydrogen, exactly what I need to get my answer. So this has to be the solution. Remember, everything on top is being multiplied, everything on the bottom is being divided. So literally this means 647 times 2 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and that's divided by 18.0 and divided by 2 and divided by 1. And the fast way to do this in your calculator, hit times by everything on top, divide by everything on bottom. So 647 times 2 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, divided by 18, divided by 2, hit equals, and you got your answer. That's the fast way to do these multi-step dimensional analysis problems. So in this particular case, when I do that math in my calculator and round to correct sig figs, 
I've got three significant digits here and here and here and all of my ones and twos are counting numbers so those are exact or defined or they're defined as exact or they're counting numbers so they have unlimited significant digits so notice I rounded my answer to three here so 2.16 times 10 to the 25th molecules of hydrogen would be my final answer so if you plug them right in the calculator that's what you should get as your answer and that's what a typical multi-step problem looks like remember every single problem is started the same way so that's how we're gonna do it do the middle step first and then decide if you need the first and third so here's the technique draw three steps and put your given and target in go to the mole ratio step in the middle put the substance you're starting with on the bottom the substance you're ending with on top and then put moles and then you look in the balanced equation to get the numbers for the mole ratio and then decide if you need the first step remember you don't need it if you already start in moles so cross it off and then decide if you need the third step and remember if you're getting to moles you don't need to do the first step because you're already being moles just cross it off so every problem is really going to break down to these four steps now another example how many grams of oxygen are needed to use up 13.6 moles of hydrogen so there's my equation and that's what I'm doing I've got 13.6 moles of hydrogen and I'm trying to get to grams of oxygen well I'm gonna set it up like all of them as a three-step problem put in my given in my target and then go to the middle step first I don't want hydrogen so that's gonna go on the bottom I want oxygen so that's gonna go on top and then I copy moles by both all of them are done the exact same way so put you together your target they're important use two part units they're important it's not just hydrogen it's moles of hydrogen and so on and now I get my numbers to the balanced equation for every two moles of hydrogen I have one mole of oxygen so that step is done next step do I need to do the first step well I'm in moles of hydrogen I want moles of hydrogen I do not need to do that first step so in this particular problem I'm already in moles so I can go straight from moles of oxygen to moles of water I do not need the first step then you look at the last step do I need it well yes I'm in moles of oxygen and ask for grams of oxygen so I got to get rid of moles of oxygen remember since I'm getting rid of it it's on top it's got to go on the bottom and I want to get to grams of oxygen so that just goes on top remember since I've already got my middle step and my beginning and end my target and my given everything I need to do is all right there in front of me I just need to cancel it out and once again I got molar mass here this is grams and moles so one mole of oxygen is 32.0 grams of oxygen off the periodic table and that's it I'm done with the problem 13.6 times 32.0 divided by 2 two significant digits in 13.6 two significant digits in 32.0 looks like I are sorry three significant digits in each of those and everything else is unlimited so it looks like I need three sig figs in my answer and I'm gonna round whatever the calculator tells me to three 218 grams in this particular case now sometimes and if you're not doing molar volume then you don't need to do this one and you can stop right here but there is another tool of stoichiometry that deals with moles and that's molar volume the volume occupied by one mole of any gas at STP standard temperature which is zero degrees Celsius standard pressure which is 1 atm is 22.4 liters so for any gas at STP 22.4 liters equals one mole it's another way to get to and get out of moles so this is a fourth potential um, step in a stoichiometry problem so I had the three we looked at before and we also have molar volume and remember this only works for gases at STP so it'd be the only time you ever use it but it does allow me if they tell me how many liters of a substance to get to moles so I can use my roll ratio so this is another tool to use in step one or step three of a stoichiometry problem so what would that look like so I have 3.4 liters of oxygen and the question is how many moles of water remember always three steps go to the middle step first I don't want oxygen I want water so moles of oxygen go on the bottom moles of water go on top from my balanced equation I've got a two to two I'm sorry two to one mole ratio for oxygen so two moles of water from one mole of oxygen then you look at steps one and three do I need to do step one well yes I do because I'm in liters of oxygen and I need to be in moles of oxygen here so yes I have to do step one so I'm going to get rid of liters of oxygen because I don't really want that what I really want is moles of oxygen well that's my standard molar volume 22.4 liters for every one mole next do I need to do my third step well it's asking me to find moles of water I'm already in moles of water so I do not need the third step so technically I'm done plug them into your calculator 3.4 times 2 divided by 22.4 sig figs this has 3 this has 2 well 2 is less than 3 so I'm gonna round this one to two significant digits 0.30 is what I would get 
remember, zeros at the end count if there's a decimal. So that is two sig figs. So that's another tool of stoichiometry. And that's really what every single stoichiometry problem looks like. So that ends our multi-step stoichiometry discussion.